wearing a dark overcoat, light scarf, and a soft felt hat. Motorists are warned against ice-bound roads. At the corner to Scotland Yard, the crime took place at 24 Calvary Street, Paddington. The murdered woman was a Mrs. Maureen Lyon. In connection with the murder, the police are anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity wearing a dark overcoat, light scarf, and a soft felt hat. Motorists are warned against ice-bound roads. getting like anything. But you bet the snow's coming down pretty thick. What you bet we're not all snowed up tomorrow? Uh, well, as long as the pipes don't freeze. I'll have to keep the central heating well still done. Mm. Mm. Not got any too much. I do wish you'd send the coke along. Uh, well, I do still want everything to go well at first. First impressions are so important. Is everything ready? Yes, I think so. Nobody's arrived yet, I suppose. No, thank goodness. But Mrs. Barlow's hurt it early. Afraid of the weather, I suppose. What a nuisance these daily women are. Use all the work on your shoulders. Uh, and yours, Giles. This is a partnership, you know. As so long as you don't ask me to cook. No, no, that's my department. And we've got lots of tins in case we're snowed up. Giles, do you think it's going to be all right? I wish you think so. It's got cold feet, have you? No. Are you sorry now we didn't sell the place and your aunt left it to you and said we have this mad idea of running it as a guest house? No, no, I'm not. I'm talking of a guest house. Just like a bat. Pretty good, what? It's a disaster, don't you see? Monk well instead of monk's well? Oh, yes. It is. Still, Monkwell is as good a name. Mm. You're a disaster. Go and stoke up the central heating. Across that icy yard. Well, oh, it's like banking up to the right now. Hurry up, somebody can arrive any minute now. You've got all the rooms worked out? Yes, it's um, Mrs. Boyle from Fog Poster Room, Major Metcalf, Blue Room, Miss Casewell, East Room, and Christopher Wren, Oak Room. I wonder what all these people would be like. Hope we have got the rent in advance. Oh, no, I don't think so. We're rather mugs at this game. Oh, they bring luggage. They don't pay everything on to their luggage. It's quite simple, Giles. I can't help think we should have taken a correspondence course in hotel keeping. Yeah. Some of these people's luggage made in a newspaper. Wrapped up in old, old rocks wrapped up in newspaper. And where shall we be then? Oh, well, they all wrote from very good addresses. So. Yes, that's what servants with forged references do. Some of these people are really criminals hiding from the police. No, oh, I don't care what they are, as long as they pay seven guineas a week. It's such a wonderful woman of business, Molly. Oh, come on. At the calling to Scotland Yard, the crime took place at 24 Calvary Street, Paddington. The murdered woman was a Mrs. Maureen Lyon. In connection with the murder, the police are anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity wearing a dark overcoat, light scarf, and a soft felt hat. Motorists are warned against ice-bound roads. The heavy snow is, the heavy snow is expected to continue, and throughout the country, Full of barn with brass. 
Instead, it's heavenly, quite heavenly. Lovely proportion. That's a fake. Um, <laughs> this table is genuine. Tell me, have you any wax flowers or birds of paradise? Oh, no, I'm afraid not. What a pity. What about a sideboard? A purple plumbing mahogany sideboard with great solid carved fruits on it. We have in the dining room. Where is it? I must see it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Absolutely perfect! Real bedrock respectability! Yes. Well, did you like the way we tied this table into a nice few little tables? Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah, we thought the guests would prefer them like that. But why do you make with the centre mahogany table? The little tables should spoil the effect, don't you think? Uh, well, we prefer them. We thought the guests would too. Mm. This is my husband. How do you do? Terrible weather, isn't it? Takes one back to Vigilance and Scrooge and that irritating tiny Tim. <laughs> Although you're quite right about the central hogging table, Miss Ralston, I was merely being carried away with my feeling for period. Huh. If you were to have the central mahogany table, you would have to have the right family around it. Stern, handsome father with a beard, prolific, faded mother with eleven children of assorted ages, a grim governess, and somebody called Pearl Harriet. A poor relation who acts as general's dog's body, but is very, very grateful to be given a good home. I'll take your suitcase upstairs for you. Oh, room, did you say? Oh, yes. Thank you. Oh, I do hope it has a fur coaster with little chintz roses on it. Yes. <laughs> I don't think your husband is going to like me. Tell me, how long have you been married? Are you very much in love? I've been married just a year. Perhaps you'd like to go up and see her room? Take it off. But I do so like hearing all about people, don't you? I mean, I find people so madly interesting. Well, yeah, I suppose some are, and some are not. I don't agree. They are all interesting. You see, because you never know what anybody is really like, or what anybody is really thinking. For instance, you don't know what I am thinking now, do you? Uh, not in the least. Cigarette? No, thank you. You see, the only people who know what people are really like are artists. Because they are a portrait, and they don't even know why they know it. But if they are a portrait painter, it comes out on the canvas. Are you a painter? No, I'm an architect. Oh. <laughs> My parents, you know, named me Christopher Wren in the hope that I'd be an architect. <laughs> Christopher Wren. Of course, I'm all, of, nearly halfway there, of course. Of course, everybody laughs about the jokes about St. Paul's. However, I may yet have the last laugh. Chris Wren's prefab nests may yet go down in history. <laughs> you know, I'm going to like this place. I find your wife most sympathetic. Indeed. Mm. <laughs> and really very beautiful. I do get upset. There, isn't that very English woman like? Compliments always embarrass them. European women, they take compliments as a matter of course. English women, though, they seem to have all the feminine spirit beaten out of them by their husbands. There's something very boorish about the English husband. Yes, you can see a room. Shut up. <laughs> this is Monkswell Manor, I presume? Yes. I am Mrs. Paul. I'm Giles Ralston. Come by the fire, Mrs. Boyle, and get warm. No luggage? Uh, Major Metcalf is, is seeing to it. I'll leave the door for him. The taxi wouldn't risk coming up the drive. It stopped at the gate. We had to share a taxi from the station, and there was great difficulty in getting there. Nothing ordered to meet us, it seems. I'm so sorry. We didn't know a train would be coming by. See, otherwise, of course, we'd have seen that someone was, uh... Standing by. All trains should have been met. Let me take your coat. My wife will be down in a moment. I was going with Mecca for hand with the bags. The drive might least be cleared of snow. Most offhand and casual, I must say. Oh, I'm so sorry, I Mrs. Walston? Yes, I you're very young. Mind. To be running an establishment of this kind, 
You can't have had much experience. Well, that's begin be a beginning for everything, isn't it? I see. Quite inexperienced. An old, old house. I hope you haven't got dry rot. Certainly not. <laughs> a lot of people don't know they've got dry rot until it's too late to do anything about it. The house is in perfect condition. You could do with a coat of paint. This no. way, Major. Got a worm in that hook. <clears throat> this is my wife. How are you doing? Absolute pleasure that time. Mm -hmm. But one time we shouldn't make it. Oh, I beg your pardon. If it goes on like this, I should say you'll have five or six feet of snow by morning. Not seen anything like it since I was on leave in 1940. I'll take a suitcase upstairs to you. Which rooms did you say? The blue room and the rose room? Oh, no, I put Mr. Wren in the rose room. He liked the full poster so much. So it's Mr. Metcalf in the blue room and Miss Boyle in the oak room. Major, sir! Do you have much servant difficulty here? Well, we've got quite a bit of local woman who comes up from the village. In or indoor staff? No indoor staff, just us. Indeed. I understood this guest house was in full running order. Well, we're only just starting, you know. I would have said a proper staff of servants was essential before opening this kind of establishment. I consider your advertisement was most misleading. May I ask, am I the only guest with Major Metcalf, that is? No, no, there are several here. This weather, two, a blizzard. No less, or oh, very unfortunate. We couldn't very well to see the weather now, could we? Oh, the north wind that blew, and it will bring snow. <laughs> and what will the northern do then, pal? I adore Mercy Brands, don't you? Oh, it's so tragic and macabre. That's why children like them. Oh. May I introduce Mr. Wren, Mrs. Boyle? <laughs> How do you do? This is a very beautiful house, don't you think so? I have come to a time in life when the amenities and establishments are more important than its appearance. If I had not believed this was a running concern, I should never have come here. I understand it was fully equipped with every home comfort. There's no obligation for you to remain here if you're not satisfied, Mrs. Boyle. No, indeed. I shall not think of doing so. If there's been any misapprehension, it would perhaps be better if you went elsewhere. You could always arrange for a taxi. The roads are not yet blocked. There's been so many applications for rooms, we should be able to fill your place quite easily. At any rate, we're raising our terms next month. I am certain not going to leave. Before I have tried with places like you would even think you could turn me out now. Perhaps you would take me to my bedroom, Mrs. Ralston. Certainly, Mrs. Boyle. <laughs> Darling, you're wonderful. <laughs> I think that's a perfectly horrible woman. I don't like her a bit. I'd love to see you turn her out in the snow. <laughs> right. It's a pleasure I've got to forego, I'm afraid. Lord, there's another of them. <coughs> come in, come in. Freight my pulse bumped about half a mile down the road. Ready to drift. <laughs> Take this. Is this your only luggage? Oh, yes, I travel light. Oh, yes. Now to see you've got a good fire. Mr. Wren, Miss... Casewell. My wife will be down in a minute. No, oh, no hurry. Got to get myself thawed out. Looks as though you're going to be snowed up here. <coughs> Weather forecast says heavy falls expected. <coughs> Motorists warned, etc., etc. I hope you've got plenty of revisions in. Oh, yes, my wife's an excellent manager. Either that or we'll have to eat our hands. <laughs> Before we start eating each other, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, is there anything else in the table apart from the weather? Oh, usual political crisis? Oh, yes, and a rather juicy murder. A murder? Ooh, I do like murder. You seem to think it was a homicidal maniac. Strangled the woman somewhere near Paddington. Sex maniac, I suppose. Ooh, doesn't say much, does it? The police are anxious to interview a man seen in the vicinity of Calvin Street at the time. Darkish overcoat, medium height, lighter scarf and soft felt hat. Police messages of this sort have been broadcast throughout the day. Useful description. Fit pretty well anyone, wouldn't it? When it says the police are anxious to interview someone, 
Is that a polite way of saying he's the murderer? Could be. Who's the woman who's murdered? Ah, uh, Miss Lyon. Miss Maureen Lyon. Young or old? It doesn't say. It doesn't seem to have been a robbery. I told you. Sex video. <laughs> this is Miss Casewell, Molly. My wife. How do you do? <laughs> it's an awful night, but I'd like to come up and see a room. There's lots of hot water if you'd like a bar. You're right. I would. continental flavour. Oh, show me where the kitchen is and what you've got, and I dare say I shall have an inspiration! <laughs> Isn't he sweet? He's just put on an apron, he's getting all things, things together. He says, leave it on to him, not to come back for half an hour. If all our guests want to do the cooking themselves, it'll save us a lot of trouble. Why on earth did you give him the best room? I told you, he liked the four poster. Oh, he liked the pretty four poster, did he? Oh, giants! You didn't land the suitcase, I did. But well, it's got bricks in it. No, no way at all. He asked me there was nothing inside. I don't know those young men around bilking hotel keepers. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Yes, I like him. I think this case was rather peculiar, don't you? Terrible female. If she is a female. <laughs> I don't know. It seems very hard that all I guess should either be unpleasant or odd. Although I think Major Makoff's all right. Probably drinks. Did he say? No, I don't. I was feeling rather depressed. At any rate, we know the worst now. They've all arrived. Oh, okay. What do you think that'd be? Probably the Bible <coughs> Street murderer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. A thousand pounds. I am. Where am I? Monkswell Manor Guest House. Oh, God, stupendous good fortune. Madame. What an answer to a prayer. A guest house and a job in post. My Rolls Royce has, has run into a snow drift, blinding snow everywhere. I do not know where I am. Perhaps I think to myself, I shall freeze to death. And then I take a little back. I stagger through the snow. I see before me big iron gates, a habitation. I am saved. Well, we have a small room for you if you like. Yes. Is this your only luggage? Yes, that is of no consequence. I have locked the car securely. Wouldn't you rather get the rest in? No, that is of... I have... I, I can assure you there will be no thieves abroad on a such a night as this. Do you have all that you need in that little bag? Yes, everything that I need. Here, in this little bag. <laughs> you better get yourself thoroughly warm. I'll see you in. It's quite a cold one, because all the others are occupied, but... You have several mm. guests. Oh yes, we just opened the space as a guest house today, so we're rather muted, I'm afraid. Charlie. Charlie. So, I'll go and get see Jerry, all right? Well, Mr. Parabuccini, have you settled in? Yes. Major Metcalf, Miss Case, and a young man called Christopher Wren. And now you. Yes, the unexpected guest. The guest who just arrived from nowhere, out of the storm. Sounds quite dramatic, does it not? Who am I? You do not know. Where do I come from? You do not know. Me, I am the man of mystery. <laughs> but now, I tell you this. I complete the picture. From now on, there will be no more arrivals. 
and no departures either. By tomorrow, perhaps even already, we are cut off from civilization. No butcher, no baker, no milkman, no daily pay, nobody, and uh, nothing but ourselves. That is admirable, admirable. It could not suit me better. My name, by the way, is Parmigi. Mr. and Mrs. Ronston, this is Monksfell Manor Guest House, you said. Good. Monksfell Manor Guest House. <laughs> perfect! Perfect! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I do rather like the snow, don't you? So peaceful and pure. Makes one forget things. It doesn't make me forget. My dear, how fierce you sound. I was thinking. What sort of thinking? Ice on a bedroom jug. Chill blains. Warmed bleeding. One thin ragged blanket. A child shivering with cold and fear. My dear, it sounds too grim. What is it, a novel? You didn't know I was a writer, did you? Are you? Sorry to disappoint you. Actually, I'm not. Why are you? Tell me about a bunch of 
have us against the law, Mrs. Boyle. You should know that. Why do you say that? Why aren't you a magistrate sitting on the bench? All I say is that Miss Paravicini, or whatever he calls himself, seems to me... Be well, dear lady, you dog of the devil, and there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you come in. No, I came in on tiptoe, like this. <laughs> Nobody ever hears me if I do not want them to. I find that very amusing. Indeed. Now, there was a young lady. Well, I must get on my letters. I'll see this good woman to try him. My charming coach just looks upset. What is it, dear lady? Well, I think it's rather difficult this morning because of the snow. Yes. Snow makes things difficult, does it not? Or else it makes them easy. Yes. Very easy. What do you mean? No, there is a quite a lot you do not know. I think, for one thing, you do not know very much about the running of it. I dare say we don't, but we mean to make a go of it. Bravo! Bravo! Oh, I'm not such a very bad cook. You are without doubt an enchanting cook. May I give you a little word of warning, Mrs. Rolston? You and your husband should not be too drastic, you know. Have you references with these guests of yours? Well, is that usual? I always just thought that people just came. It is advisable to know a little about the people who sleep under your roof. Take, for example, myself. I turn up saying, that my car has overturned the snow. What do you know of me? <laughs> Nothing at all. I may be a thief, a robber, a fugitive from justice. A madman. <laughs> well, you see, and maybe you know just as little of your other guests. Well, as far as Mrs. Ball goes, she The two of us far too cold to see him. I shall write my letters in hand. <clears throat> Allow me to poke the fight. Mrs. Ralston. Yes. Is your husband about? I'm afraid the pipes of the uh, downstairs cloak room are frozen. Oh dear, what an awful day. First police, now the pipes. Police? Police, did you say? Yes, they ran up just now to say they're sending out a sergeant. I did, but I didn't think I was going to get her. There are any coats more than half stones. And the price. Hello? Is anything the matter? I hear the police are on the way here. Why? Nonsense. They'll never get through. Well, the road drifts must be five feet deep. The roads are all banked up. At any rate, we won't be getting here today. Excuse me, Mr. Parabicini. May I put these down? You, Mr. Ralston? Yes. <coughs> Detective Sergeant Trotter, Barton Police. Uh, Can I get these skis off and sew them somewhere? Go around that way to the front door. I'll meet you there. Thank you, sir. I suppose that's what we pay the police force for nowadays, to go round enjoying themselves at winter sports. <laughs> Why did you send for the police, Mrs. Ralston? I didn't. Who is that man? Where did he come from? He passed by the drawing room window and skis all over snow. I'm looking terribly hot here. <laughs> <laughs> you may believe it or not, but the man is a policeman. A policeman. Ski. Uh, this is Detective Sergeant Trotter. Good afternoon. You can't be a sergeant. You're too young. I'm not quite as young as I look, madam. But terribly hearty. <laughs> <laughs> well, stow your skis away under the stairs. Excuse me, Mrs. Ralston. <coughs> May I use your telephone? Of course, Major Very attractive, isn't he? Well, I do. I do find police men so very attractive. No brains. Who's got the gloves? Hello? Hello? Mrs. Walston, yes. this telephone is dead. Quite dead. But it's all right, it's been half an hour ago. The line's gone with the weight of the snow, I suppose. <laughs> We're all cut off. Quite cut off now. Oh, it's funny, isn't it? I don't see anything to laugh at. No, indeed. Ah, it's a private joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Ralston, Mrs. Ralston, we can get to business. I'd like to see us alone, so we're in the library. It's not necessary, sir. We'll save time if everyone's present. Why are we sitting at this table? I beg your pardon. Thank you, sir. Do hurry up and tell us what we've done. Done? Yes. Well, there's nothing of that kind, madam. 
So I'm quite different. More a matter of uh, police protection, if you understand me. Police protection? Hmm. It relates to the death of Mrs. Lyon, Mrs. Maureen Lyon. 24 Culver Street, London, West 2. Found murdered yesterday at the 15th instant. Uh, you may have heard or read about this case. Yes, I heard it on the wireless. The one was strangled. Hmm. Now, the first thing I want to know is, is if you were at all acquainted with this Mrs. Lyon. Never heard of her. Mm, you may not have known her by the name of Lyon. Lyon wasn't her real name. She had a police record and her fingerprints were on fire, so we were able to trace her without too much difficulty. Her real name was Stanning, Mrs. Maureen Stanning. Her husband, a farmer, was John Stanning, <coughs> who resided not far from here at Longridge Farm. Longridge Farm? Wasn't that with those children? Yes, a Longridge Farm case. Three children. That's right, miss. The Corrigans, two boys and a girl, brought before the corpse in need of care and protection. A mum was found for the children at Longridge Farm with Mr. and Mrs. Stanning. One of the children subsequently died. Criminal neglect, persistent ill treatment. Case caused quite a sensation at the time. That's horrible. The Stannings were each sentenced to terms of imprisonment. John Stanning died in prison. Mrs. Stanning served a sentence and was duly released. And as I say, found strangled yesterday at 24 Culver Street. Jesus. Come on to that, madam. A notebook was found near the scene of the crime. In it was written two addresses. One was 24 Culver Street. The other was Monkswell Manor. What? Yes. That's why Superintendent Oakley, on receiving this information from Scotland Yard, thought it imperative for me to come out here and find out if you knew of any connection between this house or anyone in this house, and along this farm pass. There's nothing, absolutely nothing. It must be a coincidence. Ooh, Superintendent Ogden doesn't see it as a coincidence, sir. Mm -hmm. He'd have come himself, it'd have been any way possible, given the weather and as I can ski. He sent me here to get full particulars of everyone in the house, and to report back to him by phone, and to take whatever steps I deem necessary to ensure the safety of the asshole. Safety? What dangers do you think we're in? Good Lord, is that suggesting somebody's going to be killed here? <clears throat> I was trying not to frighten any of the ladies, sir. But quite frankly, yes, that is the idea. But the whole thing's crazy. It's because it's crazy that it's dangerous. No, I must say, it seems a bit far-fetched. I think it's wonderful. Something about Taylor, Sergeant. Yes, Mrs. Ralston. The last of the two addresses was written the words free blind mice. And on the dead woman's body was a paper. On it was written, this is the first. Below that, a drawing of the free blind mice and a bar of music. The music was to the tune of the nursery rhyme, free blind mice. You know how it goes. Free blind mice. See how they look. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. There were two children and one died. <laughs> yes, the youngest, the boy of eleven. What happened to the other two? The girl was adopted by someone. We haven't been able to trace her whereabouts again. The boy, who'd be about twenty-two now, deserted from the army and has not been heard from since. Army psychologist did say he was a definite schizophrenic, though. A bit queer in the air, that used to say. Oh, so you think that it was he who killed Mrs. <laughs> Lyon, Mrs. Stanning? Yes. He's a homicidal maniac. He's going to turn up here and try and kill someone. But why? Well, that's what I've got to find out from you. Now, it's just what... <coughs> the first thing I want to know is, is if you were at all connected with this Mrs. Lyon. No. That's what I've got to find out from you. As Superintendent Oakley sees it, there's got to be some connection. There's no connection for me. You, sir, state that you, there is no connection. No connection? What about servants? We haven't got any other servants. servants. Which reminds me, Sergeant Trotter, would you mind if I went out to the kitchen? I'll be there if you need me. Oh, that's quite all right, Mrs. Ralston. Now! Can I have all your names, please? This is quite ridiculous. We are merely staying in a kind of hotel. We only arrived yesterday. We have nothing to do with this place. You'd known you were coming here in advance, though. You booked a room here ahead of time. 
Well, yes, all except Mr. Paravicini. My car overturned in a snowdrift. I see. What I'm getting at is, is that anyone who's been following you around might well be aware that you were coming here. Now, there's just one thing I want to know, and I want to know quick. Which one of you is it that has some connection with this business at Longridge Farm? You're not being very clever, you know. One of you is in danger. Deadly danger. And I've got to know which one that is. All right. I'll ask you all one at a time. You first, sir, as soon as you seem to have arrived here more or less by accident. Para. Para Michini. But my dear inspector, I know nothing but nothing of what you have been talking about. I'm a stranger in this country. I know nothing of these local affairs of bygone years. Mrs. Goyle, really I don't see. I consider them pertinent. Why on earth should I have anything to do with this such distressing business? Miss? Case from. Leslie Case from. I never heard of Longridge Farm and I know nothing about it. You, sir? Metcalf, Major. Read about the case in the papers at the time. I was stationed at Edinburgh then. No personal knowledge. And, uh, you? <laughs> Christopher Wren. As a mere child at the time, I don't even remember hearing about it. <laughs> and that's all you've got to say? Any of you? Well, if one of you gets murdered, you'll only have yourself to blame. Now, Mr. Olsen, can I have a look around the ass? My dears, how very melodramatic. He's very attractive, isn't he? Oh, I do admire that he's so stern and hard-boiled. And this is quite a trill, this whole business. <laughs> Tree blind mice. How does the tune go? Really, Mr. Wren? Don't you like it? It's the signature tune. The signature tune of a murderer. Imagine what a kick he must be getting out of it. Melodramatic rubbish. I don't believe a word of it. But just wait, Mrs. Boyle, till I creep up behind you and feel my hands around your throat. Stop! That'll do, Christopher. It's a good joke anyway. In fact, it's not a joke at all. Oh, that's just what it is. It's a madman's joke. So tragic, so tragic and, and macabre. That's just what makes it so deliciously, deliciously macabre. You shall see your faces. <laughs> Singly, ill-mannered, and you're not a young man. Miss Giles, taking our policeman on a conductor tour of the house. Your friend, the architect, has been behaving in the most abnormal manner. Young fellows seem nervy nowadays. Dare yes, say he'd grow out of it. Nerves. I've no patience with people who say they have nerves. I haven't any nerves. No? Perhaps that's just as well for you, Mrs. Boyle. What do you mean? I think you were actually one of the magistrates on the bench at the time. In fact, you were responsible for sending those three children to Longridge Farm. Really? Major Metcalf? I can hardly be held responsible. We have reports from welfare workers. The farm people seem very nice and were most anxious to have the children. Eggs and fresh milk and a healthy out of doors life. Kicks, clothes, starvation, and a thoroughly vicious couple. But how was I to know they were very simply spoken? Yes, that was right. Ask you. One tries to do a public duty and all one gets is abuse. <laughs> You must forgive me, but indeed, I find all this most amusing. I enjoy myself greatly. <laughs> I never did like that man. Where did he come from last night? I don't know. Looks a bit of a spiv to me. Makes his face up too. Rouge and powder. Disgusting. He must be quite old too. Well, yes, he skips about as though he were quite young. You'll be wanting more wood. I'll get it. Yeah, it's only four in the afternoon. It's getting quite dark. I'll turn out the lights. What a horrid little tune that is. Don't you like it? Reminds you of your childhood, perhaps. An unhappy childhood. I was very happy as a child. You were lucky. Aren't you happy? No. 
<laughs> Sorry. All oh, that's a long time ago. One gets over things. I suppose so. Or doesn't one? Damn hard to say. Oh, they say what happens to you as a child much more than anything else. They say, they say. Who says? Psychologists. All oh, humbug. Just a damn lot of nonsense. I've no use for psychologists and psychiatrists. I've never really had much to do with them myself. A good thing for you, you haven't. It. It's all a lot of hooey. The whole thing. Life's what you make of it. Go straight ahead. Don't look back. One can't always help looking back. Nonsense. It's a question of willpower. Perhaps. I know. I expect you're right. But sometimes things happen to make you remember. Don't give in. Turn your back on them. Is that really the right way? I wonder. Perhaps that way is wrong. Perhaps one really wants to turn and face them. It depends what you're talking about. Sometimes I hardly know what I'm talking about. Nothing from the past is going to affect me, except in the way I want it to. Oh, everything's all right upstairs. What's through here? Drawing room. <laughs> Suspicious. Mm. I think I'll make my report to the superintendent over now. But you can't use the telephone, the line is dead. What? Since when? It's down since Major Blackhoff tried to just after you arrived. It's all right earlier. Superintendent Ogden got through all right. Yes, I suppose. Since then it's down with the snow, I suppose. I wonder if it's been cut. Cut? Well, who could cut it? Just how well do you know these people staying in your guest house, Mr. Ralston? I. Uh, I don't really know anything about them. Oh. <laughs> this is Boyle Ruff McGormick's Hotel. Major Metcalf from an address in. Uh, where was it? Lemington. It's a Ray Ruff Hotel in Hampstead. The case file woman from a private hotel in Kensington. Parabachini, as we told you, turned up out of the blue last night. Still, expect all the ration books, that sort of thing. Oh, I shall be looking into all of that, of course. It's just, there isn't much reliance putting that kind of evidence. But even if this. Crazy men is trying to get here and kill us all or kill one of us. I mean, we're quite safe now. Because it's snow, nobody can get here until it melts. Unless he's here already. He's here already? Why not? All of these people arrived here yesterday evening, some hours after the murder was committed. Yes, but except for Mr. Paravicini, they'd all booked out the beforehand. These crimes were planned, Mr. Ralston. Crimes? There's only been one crime in Culver Street. You're not suggesting there's going to be another one here. That there will be another one here? No. I hope to prevent that. That it will be attempted? Yes. I don't believe it's so fantastic. It's not fantastic. It's just facts. Wait, but have you got a description of what this man in London looked like? Me and my <coughs> indeterminate build, long dark overcoat, soft felt hat, face covered with a muffler, spoke in a whisper. There are three dark overcoats hanging in the hall now. One of them is yours, Mr. Ralston. And three felt that. Oh, I still don't believe it. See, it's this telephone wire that worries me, if it's been cut. Got to go and get on with the vegetables. Hmm. Is there uh, an extension? I beg your pardon, you to say something. Yes! I said, is there an extension? <laughs> yes, I'm in a bedroom. <coughs> Run up there and check it for me, will ya? To understand what I may term as the mechanics of fear, you have to study the precise effect produced on the human mind 
Imagine, for instance, that you are alone in a room. It is late in the afternoon. A door opens softly behind you. Dog. What a noise. 